Okay, here we go, part three. We're still going. All right, I told you guys. Okay, we cracked open the the Revela uh, Genesis one. Let us create man in our phantom image, representative figure, especially an idol. Who who is this Elohim that's creating an idol? And then let's make a male and female in the image of Elohim created he him male and female created he them okay so then let us create man in our image after our likeness similitude remember similitude and then in revelation 9 the shapes of the locust the word simul shape is similitude and then it means to assimilate because what they'll assimilate is the combination of the serpent race with the sheep race. That's why I keep showing you serpents and sheep on all this stuff. And you're going to see a lot of serpents and sheep now, a lot of them. And it's, it's just going to drive it home because you're going to see so much. It won't be arguable. There's a serpent race that bred with the sheep race. So the serpent race, Elohim that created the male and female, because it says Elohim, said, let us create men in our image. In the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he them. Okay, so then in Revelation 9, the locusts that are feeding off the above ground race of sheep are sending their souls to the pit where they're being assimilated into that new locust race that will come out of the pit to make war against the Lord God. Okay, now, just watch everything fall into place right in front of you. Now, I told you in the last video, we're going to have to talk about, you know, juxtaposition, and we're going to do a compare and contrast between the Lord God, God, Elohim. In the, in the same scriptures, I want to put them side by side so you guys can see the difference. But remember, who is the Almighty God, El, E-L? Who is Jesus, uh, in in Isaiah 7, Imanu El, with us, Imanu, with us is El, the Almighty God. So El, the Almighty God, took on human flesh, and he became Emmanuel, Jesus. Now let me show you, you know, I, I hear people talk, oh, you got to call his name the right name. It's Yeshua. If you don't say Yeshua, you're praying to the wrong person. It's like, that's pure and utter nonsense. I'm going to solve all that. I'm going to show you all that stuff is just complete and utter nonsense i don't know why this ad's going over here to the side this is so annoying hang on one sec let me see what's going on here this is just ridiculous okay so here we go so let me show you let's do this let let me show you real quick in first corinthians 15 so if you want to get your bibles out first corinthians 15 we'll go down here to verse 45 and it says, uh, you know what? Let's go up. Let's go up a little bit more, and let me let me show you just a couple other things. It says, "So it is sown in dishonor; it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness; it is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body. That's Genesis one. It is raised in a spiritual body. Genesis two: the spiritual comes in. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body." And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Well, does it say the first man was made a living soul? Or does it say the first man, capital A-D-A-M, which is a proper name? It says the first man, Adam. So let's, let's go here. And we'll come back to Isaiah 12 in just a moment. But let's go to 1 Corinthians. And let me show you proof using the New Testament who Jesus is in the Old Testament. So I'm going to show you who the absolutely that Jesus is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Watch. Okay, again, let, let me look at you in the eyes. Okay, I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove to you using the word of God that Jesus, Yehoshua, Yeshua, you know, everyone's like, oh, you got to say Yehoshua, you got to say Yeshua. That's nonsense. No, you don't. I'm going to show you how they're all one and the same. Okay, Jesus. Jesus is really pronounced Jesus, it's Greek. So, and then Jesus would be the English equivalent, equivalent of Jesus. 
Okay, now watch. Here we go. So, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, and let me show you. Here you go. And here we are in Esau. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, right here. See the word Adam, capital A-D-A-M. It doesn't say the first man was made a living soul. It says the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. By the way, that's Jesus in both places. Now watch. He says, I'm the first and the last. Now watch. So here's the word Adam. It's Greek word 76. Look. C76 right there. C76 right there. Right there, I'll make the number yellow attached to the blue. Adam, 76. There's, there it is, right there, 76. Of Hebrew origin, Hebrew word 121, right there. That's a very important number. It says, Adam, the first man of Jesus, man as his representative, Adam. Because in Genesis 2, the serpent race has already begun, the race that Elohim started, the serpent race that will be hunting God's children that made the mistake to come into the system and exercise their free will to come in and take on host bodies. Now, let, let's just do a little logic real quick. Okay, and for those of y'all that don't know that this is in the Bible, this is stuff everyone should know. The Bible says, be reconciled to God through Christ. That's... Just most, anyone that has been in church should know that. Be reconciled to God through Christ. Okay, well, Jesus is Emmanuel. He's the Christ. The Christ means the anointed one. So be reconciled to God through Christ. Well, who, who's God? Who's the almighty God? El. Who's Jesus? Well, the Almighty God came into the system to buy back his children. So the Almighty God comes into the system through a virgin. He overshadows her. His spirit overshadows her. And the Holy Spirit is birthed into the system into a guy named Emmanuel. With us is El. So the Almighty God El comes in as Emmanuel. With us is El. So now El is in the system. Well, do you think Elohim or the guys that formed the original deal are happy about that? Hell no, they hate him. They hate him. Let me prove that real quick. They hate him. We'll come right back to 1 Corinthians. Let me prove to you how much how much they hate him. Ready? We'll go to Exodus. Exodus 20. They hate the Almighty God. It says, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Look at that. Lord. Self-existent, eternal Jehovah. By the way, that's Jesus. Okay, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah, thy God. Okay, now a lot of people, I saw people asking that last video, does it mean every time I see God, it's Satan? No. Elohim can be a generic name for God. So now watch, just watch. I am the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah Elohim, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house a family dungeon of bondage to be, become a slave, causing to, to, ser to serve, to enslave. Look, to enslave. The house of bondage. Thou shall not make. Look at the word make. It's the same word as Genesis 1. Let us make man in our image. It's the exact same word. Let us make. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image idol what does genesis 1 say let us create man in our vein show representative figure especially an idol what's it saying here the lord god is saying you shall not make any idols or any likeness what is the word likeness something portion that is fashioned out as a shape a phantom well right there in genesis 1 the word phantom is exactly what is used when it says let us make man in our image. The very first part of the word image is phantom. 
And then it starts delineating representative figure, especially an idol. So it's saying right here, the Lord God said, do not make any idols. Do not make any likeness. Something portioned out, a phantom that is specifically, look, specifically embodiment. There is no arguing this. No embodiment or any of anything in the heavens above the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now watch this. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, the self-existing eternal Jehovah Elohim, am a jealous God. Look at the word God. Does it say Elohim there, yes or no? It's Hebrew word 410. It's the Almighty God. I, the Lord, the self-existing eternal Jehovah, am a jealous Almighty God, visiting the iniquity, the perversity that is moral evil of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Right there. To hate personally enemy foe. So if you make a host body, you completely hate L. So do you think there are happy L's in the system now? Well, then that means he's got control in the system. That means they're toast. That's why Jesus said to all everybody in John 15, watch, I'll go show you. John, watch this, John 15. So in John 15, when Jesus shows up and they can't stand it because L, L, the Almighty God, has shown up in, in a host body. Watch this. In John 15, look what he says to him. So everything in red writing is Jesus talking. And look what he said. He says, He says, Remember the word that I said unto thee, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they would keep yours also. Okay, well, I want to bring some up. That's why when I'm here delivering this perfection in data and people are coming against me, I'm like, well, you're one of them. You're just one of them that's coming against a servant of the Most High. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. They do. They hate me. And I'm very content with that. That's they're supposed to. Now look, if they had kept my saying, the word is logos, divine expression that is Christ in understanding. They would have kept yours also. But these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not, now pay attention right here. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had had not sin. Look right there. If I had, had not, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no, look at this, cloak cloak and outward showing it's a host body they have no cloak for their sin see it they have no cloak for their sin he that hateth me hateth my father also because jesus is the father in the flesh if i had not done among them the works which none other man did they had had not sin but now they have both seen and hated both me and my father but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. See, the law is theirs. We're not under the law. Once you get their law, they hated me without cause. So Jesus is El, the Almighty God, in the system. And they're like, oh, no, we did the big no-no. We did the host body thing, and we're in deep, deep trouble. You betcha. That's why they hate him. That's why they don't want Jesus anywhere in this earth. They don't. If anyone's a true convert, man, they want you gone. Why do you think they kill the prophets? Why do they, they stomp out the truth every chance they get? Because this is the devil's backyard. This is his party. Now, watch. Let's go back. To 1 Corinthians 15. Here we go. So here we go. Now, watch this. Okay. So, so it is written, the first man, Adam, right here. Watch this. It says, the first man, Adam, typically of Jesus. Okay, now, 
let's let's just go to John chapter 3 and I'll show you Jesus. So the first man Adam it says of um, of Jesus. Now watch this. So let's go to John chapter 3. Pay attention. Jesus said except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. Look at the word Jesus. Ready? It's Greek 2424, right there, 2424. Say it out loud, Jesus, see Jesus. But in, in English, you say Jesus. In Greek, you say Jesus. But it's of a Hebrew origin right here. So the name Jesus in Greek is of Hebrew origin 3091. And it means that is Yeho. Shua, right here, look. Everybody look at that, Yehoshua. So Jesus is Yehoshua, and it comes from Hebrew origin 3091. Let me show you what 3091 is. So the name Yehoshua, Ye Yehoshua, it means Jehovah, Yehoshua saves. That's what it means. Now watch. Right there, so it's of Hebrew origin. See, you read it for yourself. Right here, look right here. Yehoshua, see it? Okay, watch this. The Yeho part is from Jehovah, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, and then 3467, to save, watch. To be open, to be safe, to deliver, to preserve, to rescue, to open, to get victory. Okay, so now watch this. Let's go to let's go to Isaiah 12. Get ready to freak out, folks. Okay, behold, God is my salvation. You see the word God right here? Right there, God. It is Hebrew word 410. L. So let's just say the word as it's written in Hebrew. L is my salvation. Let me show you the word salvation. Ready? Yeshua, oh my gosh, El, El is my Yeshua, see it right there, there it is right there, El is my Yeshua, victory, prosperity, deliverance, from the word to be open, to be safe, deliver, preserve, which is from Yehoshua, El is my Yeshua. See, all these people, oh, you have to say Yeshua. They don't even know what Yeshua means. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Are you watching this? So, L is my salvation. Salvation is Yehoshua or Yeshua. And it's from the past participle of 3467, which means to be open, to be safe, to deliver, to preserve, to rescue. Okay, let's go back one more time to John and I'll show you Jesus one more time. So here's Jesus right here, 2424. Uh, Jesus in Greek is Jesus, and it's from 3091. Jesus, that is Yehoshua right here. And so let's look it up. There it is. It's from it's from Hebrew 3068, with it, which is the self-existent eternal Jehovah right there. As I hover over there, it'll open the window. Look above in the window, 3068, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. And then Yasha, which means to be open, to be saved, to deliver. Okay, so this is resolved. So, and if I if I walk it back to these, the deliverer, Hosea. Okay, so it, it always points back at itself. The truth always, always points back. Now, let's go back to Genesis 1. Does this have any Yehoshua in it, Elohim, anywhere? No. Gods of the supreme God, magistrates, angels, and judges, Elohim. Now, what are they doing? They're starting a planet. They're starting an earth. Don't forget, the Lord God allows it. This is called free will. They, 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 they've broken away. 
They're starting a system. They're setting the bait trap. The, they're setting the human host body bait trap for God's angels. And God's angels have free will. They can choose to take on host bodies and have either legitimate freedom in Christ or they can choose the flesh and the flesh is death. And that's licentious freedom. So you can have sex. So watch. Here we go. Let's see. Okay, so Elohim said, let us make man. Let's just call it mankind. Let us make mankind in our image. Again, a phantom. So mankind is a phantom. It's a representative figure, especially an idol. It's a vain show. After our likeness, similitude or model. Okay? So... That's not arguable. Now, here's the thing. That is, now you know, that is not the Lord God at all. There's no Yeshua. There's no self-existing eternal Jehovah Yeshua in there anywhere. But there is in Genesis 2 when the Lord God puts Adam into the system. Watch. So, in Genesis 2, it, it wraps up the whole uh, creation thing. And it says, thus the heavens and the earth are finished and all the host. Look at the word host. A mass of persons or figurative things, especially organized for war, an army, a campaign, military campaign, specifically hardship, appointed time, army, battle, company, soldiers, warfare. So in Genesis 1, what was being created was a way to make war against the Lord God. Those are the opponents. Now, it says they're making a host prepared for war. Well, did you know that in the Bible, it mentions the self-existent eternal Jehovah as the Lord of hosts. That's why when prophets prophesy and they say, thus saith the Lord of hosts, that means Jesus is speaking through you. I prophesied a couple of times. And when you prophesy, it'll happen. Uh, otherwise, you don't belong to the Lord God. So there you go. Now, here we go. Now watch here. Now let's get down. So on the, now watch this. And the host, they finished the host, the group organized for war. And on the seventh day, Elohim rested from his work, deputy ship, employment, never servile. So that's what Elohim does. They start worlds, don't they? Let's go back and listen to this guy here. Okay, let's go listen to this guy. You just read it and watch one more time. Makers. Did you notice he said Elohim? And then what did he say? We're the, he said we, we're the original makers. How did he get that right? It's exactly correct. It says it right here. We're the original makers. Adidas original. We're the maker of worlds. Make worlds with love. You made the people. Yes, you're our children. What do you look like? You would find it hard to look upon my face. Okay, let's talk about that for a sec. You would find it hard to look upon my face. Well, wow, isn't that funny? All these altars are bugs, insects. Yeah, 
you probably would find it hard to look upon your face if you could see into the pit and see that it's an insect race. What's coming out of the pit? The Bible says in Revelation 9. They had a king over them. Who did? The insects, the locusts, with tails like scorpions that are going to come out and sting men that don't have the seal of God in their foreheads. So he's got this right. You would find it hard to look upon my face. Can you imagine that the host body is really just an illusion? Oh my gosh, that's exactly what it says in Genesis 1. Let us make man in our image. Phantom, illusion. That's the second thing it says. It says phantom, then it says illusion. So he's saying, you, we're your makers, you're our children, but you would find it hard to look upon my face. Exactly right. We think we are, but you probably would think not. We made you in our image. What's the largest altar in the world? It's an insect. What do girls have tattooed on their labia? Mandibles, like a bug. You're gonna, you're about to see so much data. You're gonna get overloaded. We're gonna go through a lot of pictures, a lot of folders. So see, everything here is perfect. There's no way he could have gotten all this right. The only way I know this is the Holy Spirit trained me, the Lord God himself. And then I'm going to show you something else he showed me because I want to bring something up. After I did that last segment, you know, in, in these videos, I'm being very direct, guys. I don't pull punches. I come with power. I come with the word of God. I come with power. And a lot of people, oh, click, you're so arrogant. No, I have the confidence of knowing that the Lord God is behind me. I have his strength. He, my strength is in the Lord. And that may, may make me seem impudent to some people. And they may not like that. But that's just too bad. Wait till I show you what it says in the Bible when it says, the Lord is my strength. You'll go, wow, that, the definition of that word is just like Jonathan. I'll show it to you in just a minute. Revelation 12, I mean, Isaiah 12. Okay, here we go. Back to this. But there are differences. Oh, I'm sorry. Had my had my speaker off for just a second there, or my mic. Here we go. Sorry. Let's go back to Genesis two now. Watch. Okay. And the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah. Who's that? That's Jesus. The Lord God formed. Look, as a potter, He formed man, and out of the dust, which is clay, and He breathed. Into his nostrils the breath of life. I'm going to change all that to light blue. Watch this. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now you have a spiritual man coming into the system. The earth was just, the, the first man made by Elohim is just an earthy man. It doesn't have the living soul in it. A lot of people like uh, don't, oh my gosh, wait a minute, no. It's a soul hunting machine is what it is. It's a serpent race. So, and he breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul. Okay, now watch this. Down here, one more time. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep, lethargy or trance, to stun that is to stupefy with sleep or death. Cause a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. You see the capital A right there? It doesn't say man. It says Adam. Adam. Hebrew word 121. What does is, what is 1 Corinthians 15 say? 
the first man, Adam, doesn't say the first man, says the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. There he is being made a living soul. His name's Adam. That's Christ's representative in the system that will evil be taken out of his side and then Eve will get impregnated by the serpent race and then Adam will impregnate her and they'll be heteropaternal super fecundation twins and then do y'all ever wonder what happened after Cain murdered Abel where did Cain go to the land of Nod right didn't he go get married who did he marry if those are the first only two people where's your man where'd you find someone to marry there was an entire population. Go forth and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. That's Genesis 1. So there's an entire serpent race population covering this place. So when Cain kills Abel, he's sent out to the land of Nod. He goes and marries and then start all these generations of serpent race commingling with the, the sheep race. Why do you think there's always serpents choking out sheep. Let me show you a picture right now from downtown Grand Junction. When I went to Grand Junction, I was sitting in my hotel and I looked out the window and the sun was coming on the street and I saw the statue of a guy hu hugging a girl and I saw it and I went, oh my gosh. And I walked out of the hotel and I went over and I photographed this statue. Watch this. Let me show you what it is. Okay. Remember Lady Gaga extirpation to constrict, to kill by constriction? Here you go. Here's the statue right here in Grand Junction. Oh, that's pretty small, but some of, there it is. There's the statue of the girl hugging the guy. See it? A girl's hugging a guy. It makes an X on this side. And then watch this. And then on the back side, oh my gosh, it's a serpent strangling a sheep. Look at that. There's the sheep's eye right there. There's the nostril, nostril, line in the mouth, and there's the ear. No one, and I mean no one, can tell me that's not a serpent strangling a sheep. It's a ser So how did I find the same thing as the Vatican in Grand Junction on Main Street? And it's a girl hugging a guy, neither shall you touch it, because that was the bait for the angels. And there it is, right? <laughs> it's like, it's right there. And okay, now watch this. So... Remember Lady Gaga? It means to strangle by extirpation. It means a gadfly, a stinging, biting insect, destruction. Watch this. Watch. Okay, there's, there's downtown Grand Junction. Let me show you a tattoo with, with nothing done to it. You see the little sheep? Do you think that's just a sheep? That's a serpent strangling a sheep. And look what it says on this girl's hand, idol, I-D-O-L, because the sheep became an idol. And so the serpent gets to strangle it. Okay, watch this. There, I've colored it in for you. You see the serpent strangling the sheep? Why? How is it that I can always show you that stuff? I mean, it's everywhere. I can show it to you at the grocery store all day long. It's everywhere. It's just blinded. You know the way they the way they do it. They just hide it from your ability, your your vision. You just couldn't see it. Okay, so I just proved that. Uh, let me just show you a couple more. Let's see if I got. Okay, here's that piece of wood I bring up all the time. Well, here this one just popped up. So there's a sheep behind my ear that Alex at Starbucks drew. Here's the one Marcel did. Here is the sheep on top of my head. Here's the, the tongue sticking out. There's the nose. There's the eye. There's the ear. So there's the sheep. And then facing the opposite direction is a goat with its eyes closed. Eye, eye, nose, horn, horn. And he made the, the hoof, my sideburn, pretty good. And then just like Adidas, you know, Adidas got three pyramids. One, two, three pyramids. And then he made like an Aztec Indian. Eye, nose, top lip, chin. And he's wearing this Aztec Indian hat. There's the ear. So this is this is a profile right here of a guy, and they and put in the three pyramids because the three pyramids represent represent who they are. Now watch. I'll go back to the main page. Now watch. Then I'll take the you, you already saw the the sheep and the goat on my head, and then you turn it upside down. 
and it's got a serpent with its tail wrapped around my neck, and it's got its mouth open eating me. But I'm able to see it. So now we have the same common denominator over and over and over and over and over and over again. Over and over and over. Downtown Grand Junction, we have it on we have it on this one from Alex from Starbucks. Marcel hands me this one. It's on the streets on downtown Grand Junction. The Vatican itself is a giant snake with a, a, a sheep in its mouth. Lady Gaga has a bug on her dress with a serpent. You're going to see this over and over and over again now, over and over. I'm going to show you so much data now, your head's going to spin. And we're going to go through folders, and we're going to keep doing the Bible. I'm going to go to Ezekiel, and I'm going to show you this, the, this difference. Now, let me show you the card my wife gave me before she took off. It says, when you find yourself out on a limb, and then you open it up, and it says, you always have a friend in me. And I thought, weird, why? She had been behaving very strangely. She and I, before I got saved, we were like this, inseparable. But then I got saved. And she just, I just want the old Johnny back. What happened to the old Johnny? I was like, this is the new improved Johnny, man. This is, you don't ever have to worry about me doing anything like lying to you ever. And she wanted the old Johnny back. I was like, huh. And so she was behaving very strange. Don't forget, we're the smell of death to those that are perishing. So she gives me this card with two girls sitting in a tree. And I could see immediately it's a serpent eating a sheep. Here's the eye of the serpent. There's the nose of the serpent. There's the open mouth. And this becomes a stretched skin of the serpent's mouth, bottom jaw. And as you rotate it, this becomes the eye of the sheep, nose of the sheep, mouth of the sheep. And I can see it. Because the Lord gave me a very, very acute gift. Let me, uh, let me just show you. I'll enlarge it. There you go. Watch this. And I'll just kind of draw it in for you. Okay, so here's an actual serpent eating an egg. Here's a serpent with an egg going. It's a, here's the serpent right here. There's the eye of the serpent. Here's the open mouth of the serpent, the stretched skin. And here's the sheep that's going to... Now, I'm going to turn the whole thing upside down to make it easier for you to see. Here's the eye of the sheep. There's the teardrop coming out of the eye of the sheep. There's the ear of the sheep, top of the head of the sheep, the nose of the sheep, the mouth of the sheep, the neck of the sheep, and it's going into the serpent now, which I've turned upside down. But if I flip it, here it is. Here's the serpent's eye. There's its mouth, bottom jaw, and there's the sheep facing that way. It's identical. This is identical to this. So... Let me ask you something. Can anyone argue with me? Anyone? Who's, who's crazy enough to argue with what I'm showing you? Now, see, the enemy likes to come and say, oh, you're so arrogant, Cleck. No, no, no. I serve the most high God. I don't serve some punk in the pit. That's your daddy. You know, I'm talking to the people that, you know who I'm talking to, right, guys? Yeah, I don't serve some punk in the pit like they do. I serve the king. Let me show you an attribute about those that serve the king. Let me show you some. Ready? I know they're not, I know they're not going to like this. Let me show you an attribute about those that serve the Lord God and know they serve him. Behold, L is my salvation. See it right there? L is my Yeshua, victory, prosperity, deliverance, to be open, to preserve, to rescue. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord. Look at this word, Lord. Usually the word Lord is Adonai. Here it's not. It's Yah, the sacred name, contracted from Yehovah, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. I will not be afraid for the Lord, Yah, the most high, the most vehement. The Lord Jehovah, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, is my strength. Ready? Strength. Strength in various applications. Security. Boldness. Huh. I'm pretty bold because I really don't give a rat's fuzzy ass what anybody thinks. I don't. 
I'm a I'm in an I'm in a, I'm a soldier for the king and I deal with soldiers from the pit on a daily basis and I'm not afraid of them because the king is going to burn all of them and my job is to deliver the truth so all you people out there that are being misled don't get misled anymore and if I have to stand up to the punks from the pit so be it. I'm not afraid. Let's look at that one more time. The Lord is my strength, force, security, boldness, loud, might, power. Huh. To be stout. Well, I used to be a little stouter, but stout also means forceful, hardened, impudent. Huh. Prevail. Does that sound like someone you know and he is my song has become my salvation yeshua okay so if people or you know they throw their oh you're so cocky like you know what impudent means cocky that's what it means i i'm not afraid of the enemy to do what i do and to have to do what I do and to get beat on like I get beat on, they try and undermine you emotionally. Oh, you're a false prophet. When they say that, they just threw themselves in the pit. That's it. They're done. But they try and mess with your head. The enemy does. That's what he does. That's why the penalty is so severe for blaspheming the Holy Spirit because they're agents of the pit. And I deal with them every video I do. Every single video I do, I deal with them. So, just for the record, it's right there in scripture. The Lord, the Lord Jehovah, the Yah, the most vehement Jehovah is my strength, my boldness, my loudness, my impudence, and my stoutness. Where do you think I get my confidence from? You think it's from me? I'm going up against the angel of the bottomless pit. <laughs> and all his minions. It's like, uh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so now y'all can join in with me. And when you take hold of what the Lord's letting me show you, you can have the boldness too. You don't have to be afraid of them. That's what they want. Perfect love casts out all fear. I'm not afraid of them. The one that I serve is the Most High God. I serve El, the Almighty God. El is my salvation, Yeshua. It's like, what's there to be afraid of? He's the one that came in and bought back the whole system. He bought the whole system back on a cross because he's the bravest man that ever lived. The bravest man that ever lived is Jesus. No doubt about it. There you go. Okay, now, let's get back to our stuff. Isn't it fascinating that over and over and over again, we have the same agenda, and we have the same thing going on repetitively throughout, I mean, you know, there, there's going to be so much of this stuff that it's going to probably be overwhelming to you guys. And so, but I want to show you how the enemy likes to show you what their weapon was of choice against us. The weapon against God's angels. This is a Venus flytrap that's obviously meant to look like a vagina. And the flies that are flying around are testicles and penises. Why would somebody get that on them? Why would you get a tattoo if you're a girl of a Venus flytrap that looks like a vagina? And because Venus is Lucifer. Venus flytrap catching the penises and testicles. Because that's what this was about. That's what the thing was about. So there you are looking at it. Um, then here's a Broken Promises shirt. And you're going to see this several times because this is no different than the Vatican. It's what's inside that counts. This is no different than a Scooby-Doo clip I have up on my desktop. Let's see. There you go. 
Scooby-Doo, where Scooby's Shaggy in there. They're running from all these demonic people that are chasing them. There you go. There, there's the demonic people chasing them. And Scooby looks over at Shaggy and the girl on the back with Shaggy. And watch this. Okay, so this is Scooby-Doo. It's no different than the Vatican. I'm going to show you the exact same thing you're looking at right here in the Vatican. So the limb hits her and it messes up her face. And you can see that there's really something else behind the skin. What? <laughs> Reminds me of a Pink Floyd song. So you think you can tell. Heaven from hell. Can you tell a green field, you know, where you're free from a cold steel rail, like bars where you're in prison, a smile from a veil. Just like there, like, there you go. There's a smile from a veil. Because what's behind the skin, you don't know. It's a spiritual thing. You're being hunted. Good will hunting. They're hunting good within the system. And they recognize those that have it. The serpent race seeks it out, hunts you down. They get in relationships with you. They cheat on you. They lie. They, you know, they're, they do whatever it takes to destroy you. Mm. And that way they can feed the bug race, the locust race that's in the pit. Because in the pit, our insects. So Elohim said, let us make man in our similitude. What, what's in the pit? Locusts. What did the Lord say he would restore to us? The years the locusts have eaten. Wow. So wait a minute. This is all starting to add up. So the serpent race is hunting us above ground. That's the above ground race. And then they're leading everyone into sin that they can so that they die in that position and they never get turned up because it's their it's their thing they're you know they're the creators of it just like adidas original you know what let's let's do an adidas original commercial real quick okay just real quick adidas original they're all how many are there one two three four five there's five they're all upside down making an x half white half black there you go Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Had a little glitch on the audio. Sorry. Watch this. Okay. The girls that have their heads facing opposite directions, see they're facing opposite directions. That's in Jude representing, see they're black and white. See on top of their heads. Is that a trident? Yeah. Is it a W? Yes. Yes. Are they facing opposite directions with twin females because that's what started the earth system was twin females? Yes. Okay, let me show you where that is in the Bible. That's in Jude. And angels which kept not their first estate, but left the word, the word is estate. It means a commencement because angels, we, we begin as angels. We don't begin as humans. We begin as angels. I'll prove it. I'll prove it using the most simple thing in the world. Be reconciled to God through Christ. Did you know by definition the word reconciled? Reconciled, you cannot be reconciled to anyone that you weren't in a very personal relationship with previously. How did you your 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 relationship get broken? Well, you decided to be here. 
So be right because he has to come here to get you. So God, L is in heaven. L comes here. It's Emmanuel. Be reconciled back to God through Christ. So he comes looking for you. Hey, I want you to come home. I love you. Just admit your guilt before God. You admit your guilt and then you can go back. But while you're here, you're in everlasting chains of darkness. Unless you get converted, look. Everlasting chains of darkness. Watch this. Everlasting. Does it say forward and backwards, yes or no? It does. Forward and backwards. Does the word chain say a band that is ligament of the body, shackle of a prisoner? So does it, and it, it also says impediment or disability because an angel being in a host body is an impediment. It is a disability. You've been shackled now. Now you're shackled to your own doppelganger and you're in everlasting chains of darkness. If you don't get converted, you're done. And I think there's some that are everlasting uh, forward and backward. And then in First Peter, it also talks, says angels that send. It talks about it as well there. So see, angels which kept not their first estate, their beginning where they were born. They're born in heaven. You're not born here. You're you're born down here as you're a punitive thing. And then if you don't get converted, your descendants carried out. That's why you go into the pit for all eternity unless you accept the free gift of God. Now everything makes sense. When you go to these churches, they can't explain any of this. None of it. Oh, Genesis 1 and 2 are the same account of creation nonsense it's like have you read your bible and people just sit there oh okay all right well this guy's a preacher and they think oh because they're up there and they're the ones talking behind the podium you're not oh no we're the authorities here <laughs> it's a joke it's a total joke okay so there you go so here we go adidas original see there are the originals the originals what are the originals upside down here the chains of darkness are, everlasting, forward and backwards. Why are they looking up? Okay, here we go. Let's keep going. I'd just like to comment on what a swell, clean, godly guy that guy looks like. Just, yeah. I'd like to just comment, love the mask. it through without exemption I just like to comment on that excellent uh, use of vocals exemption. that was awesome I planned each chartered course each careful step along the highway and more much more than this. I did it my way. I did it my way. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there. I mean, th this is no different than the tattoo of the the, the girl had of the Venus flytrap. That's called the birth of Venus, that painting right there. The birth of Lucifer, the birth of Venus. And now what's happened? What happens in the in the in the thing in the commercial? Oh, it turns to kind of like a dystopian nightmare type technology. White turns to black. Everything like the garden turns to technology. And welcome to the new age. Welcome to the new age. Okay, so anyway, there it is. And they have a whole lot of the same commercials. Okay, so I just had a very strange thing happen on my screen. It looks like I, it got hacked almost. So I'm scared to do another hour of video right here. Because if I do an hour from this point and it's, it's and the program jinked, then everything I do from this point could be a mess. So if it's just a little point part right now, then what I can do is I can just stop it here and then continue on the next video. 
I'm going to show you one more commercial. It's called Versace Bright Crystal. It shows like a girl coming down from heaven. Think of Adam and Eve and just think of the girl as Eve. Okay. Showing her coming down like as an angel. And then penises start coming out of a dry desert. Well, remember I showed you the, the thing at the Hoover Dam and the guy holding the two grains and it says they died so the desert could bloom, remember? It's got two grains and there's a guy laying dead in the water and, and the plaque is mimicking Nut, the Egyptian pantheon of gods, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger doing the same thing in the Ian Bud Light commercial. Well, here it is in, in a Versace Bright Crystal ad, watch. Okay, now I'm just gonna ask you some just some normal question. Do you think it's weird that some girl comes down from heaven like an angel and she's sitting on a desert floor that looks like serpent skin that's totally desolate and she's rubbing her hands on it while she's naked and penises start coming up out of the ground and then she gets off and then all of a sudden her her essence is captured in a bottle? Do you think that's a weird commercial? Well, it's true. The whole thing's true. That's why they did it. Watch. Here we go. Now she's dead and there's her essence trapped inside the bottle right there see her right there let me go back just a hair see her right here in the bottle there there's her eye her eye and there's her mouth and now she's trapped inside the bottle her essence has been stolen Versace don't you want to go buy some Versace right now? It's like such a joke. They're so busted. Okay, so here's the thing. Because of the weird thing that just happened, I'm going to stop this video. Hopefully nothing bad happened. I'm just going to load this up as part three. I'm just going to start from here and just keep going on part four. All right? So, oh, wow. we've already I've already done another hour. This is probably going to be seven or eight hours of video going on here. I'll just keep going, and I'll try and knock out as much as I can tonight. Okay. Anyway, so are you guys starting to notice that something? Something ain't right. It's like so crazy. Uh-huh. Here we go.